If there is one man in NBA history that you could argue is not human, that man is Wilt Chamberlain. In his 14 year career, he solidified himself as one of the most dominant rebounders and defenders, as well as one of the most prolific scorers the NBA has ever seen. He finished his career with 30 points, 23 rebounds, and 4 assists a game, which are career numbers that nobody has even come close to achieving in the past 50 years of basketball. However, Wilt thrived in a league that looked nothing like the NBA today, so the question is, would Wilt be able to be as great as he was if he was in the modern NBA? Wilt Chamberlain was drafted to the Philadelphia Warriors with the third pick in the 1959 NBA Draft after being part of the Harlem Globetrotters for a year. He immediately had a massive impact, leading the league in scoring with 38 a game and rebounding with 27 a game as a rookie. To nobody's surprise, he won Rookie of the Year and also won the MVP as a rookie, which I think is a record that will never be broken again. He continued his dominance throughout the 60s and into the early 70s, racking up a long list of accomplishments in the process. He's a two-time NBA champion, one-time Finals MVP, four-time league MVP, 13-time NBA All-Star, and if the Defensive Player of the Year was around, he would have 10 of them. It is estimated that Wilt averaged around 8 blocks per game in his career, and everyone obviously knows about his 100-point game. Like I said before, times have changed since Wilt was an NBA All-Star. Keep in mind that he was 7 foot 1 and 275 pounds. During his rookie year, there was only one other 7 footer in the entire league, Walter Dukes, who was only 220 pounds. There were 4 players who were 6 foot 11 and one at 6 foot 10. Every other player in the league was 6 foot 9 or shorter. The point is, there was a lot less height back then. There were also only 8 teams in the league, and out of those 8 teams, only 2 of them had a center over 7 feet. That's 75% of the entire league. So Wilt didn't really have to play against anyone his height most of the time, and when he did, he had a 55 pound advantage. Also, the pace of play in the NBA has slowed down drastically. There were simply more shots taken in the 60s. Teams ran up and down the court looking for the first shot they can get. They shot at lower percentages, which is why points and rebounds were more inflated back then. In 1962, the league average for points per game was 118.8. In 2022, the league average for points per game was only 110.6. In 1962, the league average for rebounds per game was 71.4. In 2022, the league average for rebounds per game was only 44.5. So in the average 1962 NBA game, there was about 8 more points and a little over 25 more rebounds for each team. Not to mention there wasn't even a 3 point line back then. Teams in the 60s were putting up almost 120 points a night shooting 2s and free throws. It's also important to adjust Wilt's stats to the amount of playing time he would get today. Let's compare him to Giannis, considering he's the closest thing to Wilt in today's league. Giannis played about 33 minutes per game throughout his career, and Wilt played about 46 per game, so his stats have to be changed. If he had played 36 minutes per game, he would have averaged 23.5 points, 18 rebounds, and 3.5 assists for his career. Giannis has averaged 22 points, 9.5 rebounds, and 4.5 assists over the course of his career, and those numbers are only going to go up. In my opinion, if you're truly a great player, you can find a way to thrive in any era. I think Giannis would have Wilt stats if he played in the 60s, and Wilt would have stats similar to Giannis's if he was playing today. The idea that if Wilt played today he would put up the same numbers is just as ridiculous as the idea he wouldn't be able to make the NBA at all. At the end of the day, he was a 7 foot 1 freak with a 45 inch vertical, so he's going to dominate regardless of what court you put him on. If he was a rookie this upcoming year, people would be calling him the next Shaq or Hakeem. He wouldn't be some undrafted bum just because the NBA has changed. Even without the 3 point line, I think Curry would dominate in Wilt's era because like I said, great players adapt. I do think Wilt would be an all-star in today's NBA, and depending on how good of a shooter he can become to stretch the floor, he could possibly be an MVP too. Regardless of what era he plays in, I think he retires a Hall of Famer. But what do you think? Would Wilt Chamberlain be good in today's NBA? Let me know in the comments below, and subscribe if you already haven't to help these two numbers switch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.